Welcome to the Dirt Time Channel. I'm Alan Halcon. And I'm Christopher Nierga. You know, Christopher, I'm amazed. Every time I come into your yard, there is just a plethora of plants. It's just like you Plethora. I like that. You're expanding your vocabulary. <laughs> I'm trying little by little. Yeah. I'm not as articulate as you those yet, but I'll get there. But anyway, we're standing underneath a walnut tree, and I don't think we've ever talked about black walnut and its many uses. Probably not. I mean, look at this. This is loaded with nuts right now. And everywhere in the union, there's uh, there's black walnuts. Maybe mm -hmm. not this specific one, but black walnuts are very, very common. Now, of course, what's the common thing we think about with walnuts? We eat them. We eat them, right. So the, the wild walnut has a thick shell. You need a rock or a hammer to break into it. Right. And maybe a little pick. So it's maybe uh, half meat, if that, mm -hmm. and the rest is a thick shell. Now, this is what it comes inside. It, does, yeah. it doesn't grow like we normally see in a store, like a walnut they've, shell. They've cleaned, no, the, the English walnut has that too, but they've cleaned it for right. you. Right, right. <clears throat> Did you guys know that? So now, what do you know about the husk? The husk is a it's a great fish poison, and it's also a dye. Okay, so when you do it as a fish poison, you want to crush the green guys, mm -hmm. and you throw them in pools of water, and then it's a dye. Look, when I break into it, it turns black, and uh, this is probably not mature enough. But I've done this with children before, where I would make marks on their hand. The original henna. Probably the original henna. You could, this will turn dark. See, I'm getting a little bit of a stain. And this will stain for approximately about a week or two. Yeah, a week or two. So it won't come off. Well, if, you had, if you're at a day camp and you paint children's faces with this, your par the parents will call you. They well, will not no, be happy I have a better that. idea. For, yeah. for those of you I that like to paint your face. Well, right for now. those of you that like to drink and party, um, the, the next person that passes out, black walnut all yeah, over that, their that's face. That's a great idea. That would be funny. It won't last forever. Well, it won't be funny to them. No, it won't be funny to them. Yeah. But, but so, it will come off. Now, one time when I was living with my parents, <laughs> I, I like, you see my hands have these little stains like I've been smoking marijuana. I don't smoke marijuana, by the way. I'm just, but Alan pointed that out to me that it kind of looks that way. I, I pointed uh, it out? Well, maybe no, it was No, not dude. me. I think it was probably dude. It was probably dude. Okay, but see how my fingers are already getting stained. One time at my parents' house, I didn't want to bother with gloves. Oh. So I cleaned the black walnuts. My hands were the color of Alan's t-shirt. They were that black. You are kidding and me. And they didn't wash off. I didn't realize it was a permanent stain. So my, as as the as the stain came off over the course of two weeks, my hands looked purple, and then people I wore gloves. It was bizarre. <laughs> You're kidding me, no, really? I, How I, old I, were you? I don't know, 14 or 15. I didn't know any better. <laughs> what did your parents say? Uh, my mother they said. Must have my mother said that'll teach you, <laughs> right? So uh, uh, another thing about the tree is that it's uh, it, it's a native. It's uh, it takes care of itself. You could have it in your yard with pretty much no care, but it does attract a lot of squirrels. It does. I mean, look at all the nuts here. There's squirrels here all day. They're running on the roof. They're getting all those. But it also attracts. This tree attracts. Uh, um, uh, what are the bird? The uh, the packers. Woodpeckers. Uh, woodpeckers. Yeah. You know, I for a long time when I first learned of this tree, I had a very difficult time distinguishing it between it and shamalash. Shamalash is an ash that we out here on like mountain ash. There's a lot of ashes, but the shamalash is very common. Well, they both have a pinnately divided leaf. Yes, and it took me a long, a long time to really, from a distance, yeah. tell the difference between a shamalash so and this black walnut. The shamalash doesn't have a, a nut. It actually has a, you know what a maple seed looks yeah. like? It's a double winged. Right. The, the ash has a single wing. No, well, up close I could tell, but yeah. driving by at 100 yeah. miles an hour, yeah. I didn't say 100 miles an hour, but it's true. I do some, Alan sometimes. Alan doesn't do that. So also, one other use, in the old days, the uh, Southern California Indians would take a half a shell. Now, this isn't a perfect one, but they look like a pig's nose. And they would pack them with tar and use them in a dice game. So it's going to fall this way or that way. And I think it was like at one point or zero point. Well, it's like a drinking game. If it lands no. one side, you drink one cup. If it no, lands the other it wasn't side, it's a two drinking cups. Game. It was a dice game. It wasn't drinking. They may have bet for something. but uh, So it's a pretty useful plant. And... Uh, it's worth knowing about. Good, good plant to make uh, bows with. Uh, actually, it's not the greatest for bows. Locust I, I, being better. I told, yeah, locust is much better. I asked the guys who meet at the archery range here mm -hmm. locally, and and I made a few bows out of walnut, but it just it breaks too readily. Right. And there may be guys that are good at it, but I they they said don't don't waste your time. Cool. So, yeah. Well, let's take a look at this other There's one. Another I, good tree. All here right, cool. Too, let's yeah. take a look. All right, so. You also have a bay tree in your yard. Yeah, this is a native California bay. These are all the dry leaves coming down. Everybody who's cooked with Italian, you know, Italian recipes has used a bay leaf for spice. One leaf 
is probably good for a pot, you know, and one leaf makes a good cup of tea. It's it's like nature's Alka-Seltzer to drink the Bay tea. Have you ever had it? I've never had that, yeah. but uh, you can, there was also a lot of other good uses for this. Well, yeah, well, okay, but you can put this in uh, a cold cantina water. Right. Drink it that way. It's, it's refreshing. Oh, okay. Or you could have hot water tea, and it's really tasty. Um, you could cook it with your food. So every way you'd use a regular bay tree, mm -hmm. bay leaf, the European bay, you can use the California bay. So... We were talking earlier, like if you store rice, grains, mm -hmm. wheat, stuff like that, beans, you get the little bugs and weevils in there. So you can, what are those little desiccant packets called? You know those? Yeah, well, that's for uh, moisture, though. That's to absorb the moisture. Well, that should keep the bugs down, too, but it absorbs the moisture. But people add, shouldn't it? I've never used it for that. I never knew that, but uh, it may. I don't I, know. I, somebody will correct us if we're wrong. Yeah, I'm sure I, they I, will. I thought it was good for that, too, but you can use these leaves, dried, of course, or eucalyptus leaves in your containers of grain to help keep the pests away right and some dry some some of these dry leaves in the cupboard or whatnot will keep the That's ants right. keep bugs down we'll keep the ants at bay <laughs> okay it'll keep I the can't ants resist. At bay. right also um uh, a friend of mine compared the weight of these because you get like 10 for a buck or so he compared the weight of these and he realized this is more expensive than ginseng so this is more expensive than ginseng when you, when you look at it by weight even though people don't use that much it's more expensive now you could earn your way through college. You bag these up and sell them on the now, street corner. Now, do you have an open slot at the farmer's market? I can just, like, come to your yard, get some clippings, go sell this over there? You could probably, I would let you do that, yeah. You would? Yeah. That's so generous it, it, of you. What, what, are you. what degree are you working towards? Uh, Whatever. Okay. No, no degree. Also, the nut, mm -hmm. the bay nut, is, uh, is starting to mature. This is August now. Usually September and October they ripen, so it's got a really mushy outer skin, like the walnut, uh -huh. and then a, a thin shell inside. So you take the mushy part off when you harvest them; it turns kind of purple or black. And then you, um, I usually shell them and then I boil them or roast them. And it's kind of like a burnt walnut or, or a burnt macadamia. Now Paul Campbell likes to bake them, and his are delicious. He bakes them a little dark, and they taste almost like chocolate. Have you tasted Paul Campbell's? Yeah, I liked I, them. I, I think I've, I've tasted some. I think now, he overcooks them, though. Pa Pascal yeah. has experimented extensively with these. Has he? And he's uh, found the, the just the right combination of, of spices, herbs, and all that to pickle them. He and pickles these? He pickles them. He takes the shell off and pickles yes. them? Yes. Oh, that would be good. And it probably sits them in the... He keeps them in the juice for, what, a week, couple I, weeks I or so? I have no idea. That's but, clever. And now, I've not tasted them, but the claims are that they're delicious. Interesting. Another use, by the way, I had I just was thinking about this. In Oregon, they call this candlewood or candle nut. Not this species, but a close, closely related one. And you could boil the wood or the bark, and a little layer of wax or oil comes to the top. Oh, interesting. And apparently, some people actually do use that for wax or candle making. I think it would take a lot of boiling to do it. I've never actually done it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And then, I, um, uh, oh, I guess I'll jump back. But this piece of wood you notice there's some straight branches in the back. This is California Bay. At one of our dirt times, Joe DeBille was there showing us how to make bows. And this is a stave from California Bay. It has a nice springy wood. It's one of my favorite bows because it has an oil content, so it works really well. Uh, and so this is a really useful tree. Wow. If you plant it, it's evergreen. It doesn't require any care. Now, in the wild, it's only known to grow along the west coast from uh, like Oregon down into Baja. I don't know where it would, if it would grow if people have snow, but you could try it. Now, I know down by the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, yeah. they have where the swimming pool is at, that park there, I mean, it's just ginormous. Ginormous? That's, that's my ginormous. word. Well, that's not my word. But ginormous I'm bay trees? Bay trees in the park. Really? I mean, is, huge. Is there good, are there good staves I can go cut? Uh, well, yeah, if you can if you can somehow manage to climb the, the trunk because... The park people would take a dim view of me cutting it. Is it in the park? It's in the park But I, it would be voluntary pruning, right? I wouldn't uh, charge uh, the city. Again, you would have to figure out how you would get up to the top I branches. See, I see. By the way, just to follow up, we looked at the walnut a second ago. I found one of these on the ground. And that's the um, the, half, pig nose. The, the, the pig nose. How do you do it? Like the pig nose. But this is what the uh, the Shumash and other tribes would fill with tar, put a little shell there, and you figure when you toss it, it's going to land that way or that way. And they, they did a well, popular that's, game you know, with this. Well, that's not a very challenging game if it only has two sides to land on. No, but you would have you would have like five of them, and you toss them, and then you count up whatever it does. Okay. There were rules. Are you going to 
teach us how to play that I, game I, at some point? It's been 20 years. I don't remember how to do it. At some point, if I re-remember... Do I have to go to Paul Campbell for that? That would be quicker. I'll good probably point. never find my notes. Anyway, this is uh, pretty good. Two useful trees, right? Well, yeah, no, that's excellent. And I guess I'm going to go look for Paul. I'll see you later, Christopher. All right, I'm Alan Halcon, Christopher Nergesh. We'll see you next time on DirtTime.com.